Hey guys, even here with another video and this video we are starting as you can see with a most recent physique update of Raphael Brandau and this photo was posted actually by Flex Lewis and he says sneak peek taken nine days ago he won't post it so i will uh, he tags his coach rafael's coach new coach neil hill yoda who arrives in brazil soon and then it's all out suffering until the finish line and then he says who knows i might even show up in brazil also what's so interesting about this physique update is that rafael changed coaches like a year and a half ago so he switched from working with chris asito for like five years and with chris asito he basically broke through he got up to be 10th at a Mr. Olympia. But for some reason, even though he had great success, he decided to switch coaches and to switch to uh, Neil Hill. And you guys know that Rafael is very good with uh, Flex Lewis, who actually posted this physique update, uh, was always coached by Neil Hill. And so I'm sure that had some sort of an influence. And I'm sure the reason... The main reason behind this decision, made by Rafael Brando, of course, is the fact that Chris Asito is not an off-season coach. He is not the coach that's gonna get you huge. He is the coach to get you conditioned and drive for the stage. But what Rafael needed to climb up to the very, very top of the top levels of bodybuilding, like to be top 5, top 6 of the Mr. Olympia... He needed more muscle, he needed more mass, and Chris Asito wasn't able to help him with that. And I heard stories about other people who were coached by Chris Asito. He doesn't really do off-seasons, you know. He just lets you do your own thing in the off-season, and then he helps you get in shape. But that's not exactly what Raphael needed, so he switched to Neil Hill. And we've seen a couple of other physique updates in the off-season, but now, seeing this physique update... At around 6 weeks out of the Arnold Classic. Right now it's 5, but this was taken a week ago. So, 6 weeks out of the Arnold Classic, after seeing this physique update, I can say that it was the right decision to hire Neil Hill. I think Flex Lewis probably recommended him to Raphael. And I think it made sense. I think it was the right call, because let's check this physique out. As you can see, guys, I mean, at 6 weeks out, the conditioning is good. It's getting better. I still don't know if he's gonna be as conditioned as he needs to be, as he was when he was working with Asito. We still have to wait to see the finished product at the end on the stage, but I think they're gonna hit the nail on the head with this one. I think he's looking really good right now, and I think he looks improved, significantly improved. Now, let's compare this photo with a photo from his last prep. Obviously, he's more conditioned, and the photo on the left is edited, but... I think we can still see the improvements in muscularity. First of all, first thing that probably pops to your eyes as well, it's chest. Chest looks twice as big. Like, it looks so much fuller, so much denser. Like, he definitely added a lot of muscle in that chest. The second thing I'm noticing is legs. Legs are definitely looking just bigger, thicker. His feet are closer together on the new photo, so it seems like he added more tissue to the adductors than he really did, but he definitely, I think he definitely made progress. I think his legs overall do seem bigger, fuller. We'll see what's really left once he's completely shredded, but I think it's gonna be definitely a difference. I think once he's completely ready, once he's dried out and filled out, I think it's gonna look just even more impressive than it does right now. Also the arms, I think the arms are looking bigger, and overall he just seems bigger, thicker, rounder, we cannot see his back unfortunately, but I'm pretty sure it also made a lot of progress, and uh, the cost for these gains was not bigger midsection, his midsection stayed tight, it stayed small, he still looks aesthetic, he still looks like a classy guy, but with so much more muscle. There was a time when he was battling against Samson Dower and it was always a close battle. One show he would win, the other Samson would win. It was really close between these two guys. Is that gonna be the case of the Arnold Classic? I don't think so. I don't think he's on that level yet. I think Samson is still a couple of steps ahead. I think Samson made a little bit too much progress. I think he really leaped forward a lot in the past couple of years. And Raphael, even though he does look improved, he is definitely much improved. I don't think he's big enough and just complete enough and, you know, good enough to beat uh, Samson, to really battle against Samson. But... I think I do have him at the top of the second callout. 
I'm pretty sure the first call out is gonna be only Hardy and Samson, and then in the second one, I have right now Rafael Brandau, I have Horse MD, I have James Hollins yet, maybe Justin Rodriguez, maybe somebody else, but those three guys, in my opinion, are gonna make the second call out, and I believe Rafael is gonna end up at the top of that call out because. He was 10th at the Mr. Olympia already, he's pretty much proven, and um, now with all these gains, and I think he's gonna bring good conditioning, because he usually does, yeah, he has a new coach, but I think he has an issue with coming in condition, so as long as he is in shape and he peaks fine, and uh, with these improvements that are visible right now, yeah, I think top 3 at the Arnold Classic seems pretty safe for Rafael right now, what do you guys think? Are you seeing the same kind of improvements? Do you think he can actually push Samson Dauda maybe or Hyde Japan? Can he win the Arnold Classic? I think he can win the Arnold Classic Brazil, but as far as the Arnold Classic Ohio, top three best case scenario in my opinion. But the improvements are definitely great, visible. What do you guys think? Tell me down below. All right, next up, we got a pretty interesting physique update from Phil Heath. A retired seven-time Mr. Olympia champion. And this photo was posted by his wife. I don't know why the photo is in black and white, it always throws me off, it scares me when I see bodybuilders in black and white photos, but it is what it is. We got a physique update photo of Phil Heath, and this time around, he's actually showing his midsection. It's been a while since we saw this guy's stomach, and I gotta tell you, it actually looks very good. Now, we've seen a bunch of physique updates of Phil Heath, like the recent one when he trained with uh, Honey Rambod, or when he trained with Hari Chopin, and, you know, he looks good, like, he looks like he still got it, he didn't lose a lot of muscle, he looks like he could come back and, you know, be at the top at the Mr. Olympia still. But the question is always, can he win another Mr. Olympia? Because he wouldn't come back to be third or fourth or fifth, if he comes back, he needs to win. Now, at this point, it's pretty sure that he will not come back, but what was always the talk is whether his midsection would look good if he came back. And now, we can finally see it. We don't have to speculate anymore. We can see what his midsection looks like. And you can see the scar from his hernia surgery, but, you know, it's not looking... It's not a big scar. It's barely even visible. What I would be more worried about is whether his stomach is protruding or not. And right here, it looks pretty flat. It looks, you know, tight. It looks good. It doesn't look like he still has a bubble gut. Now, I do notice that his midsection is kind of taking a lot of space, you know, it's not as small as it was when he was starting his career. It's, even though he is downsized, his midsection is kind of, you know, taking up a lot of space. Now, if he started pushing food, if he started bulking, because he would have to get bigger, I mean, he does look good, but this is not Mr. Olympia level size. This is not him at his biggest he would have to get much bigger. And if that happened, if his chest, his shoulders, his arms, his back, his legs, if everything blew up, and it was as big as it once was, his waist, his midsection would appear smaller in comparison. It's the illusion. But when he would start pushing the food and trying to grow, I think his midsection would grow as well. I think his bubble gut would probably be back. I mean, this is all hypothetically speaking, I'm not saying that he will come back, I'm pretty sure at this point that he's done, that he's retired, he even spoke about this, he doesn't have any plans of coming back, I mean, you never know, maybe he just decides to do it, it's not impossible, what I'm saying is whether he can do it, I mean, do it successfully, and in my opinion, he can, and now after seeing his midsection, I gotta say it looks good, I don't know if it would get worse once he would get bigger, Maybe it's down in size because everything else is down in size, right? But it doesn't mean that it wouldn't blow up if everything else blew up. But this is the first time that we're seeing his midsection in a while. And, you know, it looks good. It looks surprisingly good. I thought it looked worse. I thought that's why he was hiding it. But no, no, actually it looks surprisingly good. Would it get worse if he prepped for the stage? I think so, I think it probably would. Enough with the retired bodybuilders potentially coming back, we got some new blood to speak about, and this is the youngest IBB pro, Anton Retushny, and this is his most recent physique update. So he recently competed and won his pro card at the Nationals, and now he's obviously reversing back, and he's, I think he's having a really good rebound, because right now, 
he looks really good like the conditioning is still very very good but it looks like he is gaining size slowly now it, it's really a shame that this pose is not a pose an official pose in classic physique front lat spread it looks great i mean all these classic guys look really good when they hit the front lat spread chris bumstead especially and you can see anton as well he looks amazing in this one his waist looks really small the lats are popping and the way he's hitting it he's pushing his arms forward and he's opening up the lats as well you can see that one side there is no gap between his arm and his lat and this creates the illusion of you know having a lot of thickness and like the waist looks really small the shoulders look really wide i mean it's an awesome pose and he looks really good in it what he needs to focus on improving, I mean, there isn't anything, like, in particular, maybe his legs, but I think just overall he needs a little bit more muscle, and he's really good, like, he can do some real damage, and potentially in a couple of years, he can replace Chris Bumstead. I think he can do it, we'll see if he's gonna do it, but he definitely seems like he's on the right path, and he does look really freaking good. Whatever you guys think about Anton Ratushny or Phil Heath or Rafael Brando or whatever you have on your mind, please tell me down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you still haven't subscribed to this channel and you want to help me out to reach those 50k subscribers, just click that subscribe button, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best, guys, and bye-bye.